fun. Happy Tuesday and happy So What Day. I hope that you're having a great start to your week. Um, mine is a little chaotic. It's the last week of school. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot going on. But um, I have a really great tutorial for you today. And, you know, it's all about getting outside and enjoying the outdoors. And I hope that all of you are able to do so um, these days and that the weather is cooperating for you. Um, all three of my kids have um, been in soccer for a few weeks now, and that's always how our summer starts. So it's kind of how I conceptualized the project that we're going to talk about today, which is a convertible picnic blanket. Uh, because when we are out at the soccer games, you know, in the grass, whatnot, inevitably it's pretty wet at the beginning of the season. And we put all of our blankets down and all of our stuff, and then it's kind of a gooey, murky mess. So I thought I would create a convertible picnic blanket that we could take to the soccer games, to the park, even to the beach or to the lakeside. Um, and make it out of some vinyl tablecloths so that the moisture stays away from the blanket, away from our bodies. It's easy to clean. Um, and then we can just fold it into itself, create a tote bag, and haul some more stuff in it back to the car. So that's what I'm going to take you through today is how to create this convertible picnic blanket. And it also kind of stemmed from these great vinyl tablecloths that I stumbled upon at my local fabric store. And I've seen them there. I've seen them at big box stores like Walmart and Target as well. They're like all over in the outdoor section by the grill stuff. Um, even at Home Depot, like by the uh, plants and things like that, you can find some of these. Sometimes they're seasonal, like this little star one for, you know, Memorial Day, July 4, all those kind of great patriotic holidays coming up. Um, or you can find them in random prints as well. And you can certainly purchase this vinyl tablecloth, you know, fabric. It's got like a flannel backing to it um, over in the home decor section of your fabric store. But I find it's much pricier when you buy it over there than it is to grab up two of these tablecloths and use one as the top of your blanket and one as the bottom. Also, if you only want the vinyl coating on the bottom of your blanket, you know, against the grass, you can add fabric or um, even if you have a sheet that maybe doesn't have a partner um, or, you know, is a little bit past its prime, you can use it for the top um, because, you know, this is going to be used and abused outside um, and on the grass. So you don't need to use your best, most fabulous fabrics for this project. Um, it's really functional for the most part. And, you know, extra points if it looks pretty um, and if you can find, you know, some cute patterns like this. But um, if you're able to find these, this uh, vinyl tablecloth measures 52 by 90 inches. So it makes a really good size picnic blanket. You can also cut it down in size if you want something more square um, or even just a little bit smaller. That is totally fine as well. So that's what we're going to start with. We're, of course, going to add some great sulky threads and some more little functional accoutrements to our picnic blanket uh, to make it even better when you are using it. So before we get into our tutorial, I of course have some business to attend to because we are getting closer to our London trip with craft tours. And I talked about this last week uh, because craft tours told us that they have been inundated with calls and emails and people wanting to get in on this tour and they just cannot even get to the people fast enough. So it's a happy problem, but that also means that our tour is getting very close to selling out. 
And it may seem far away because this is happening in November after Thanksgiving time because we want to hit up all those great Christmas markets. Um, but the tour will close for registrations in July. So it's a great time to be thinking about this and considering it. And if you're kind of on the fence, you can ask me any kind of questions that you have about the tour. Or, of course, you can call Craft Tours directly as well. Um, but it's going to be a great time. It's Harry Potter themed plus Downton Abbey themed. And we're just going to have a great time together. I have a really fun hands-on project that we're going to be working our way through as well when we have our uh, little pockets of downtime. So uh, I think you'll all really enjoy it. Also, our Boba Tea in the Hoop Zipper Pouch webcast with Parker on the porch is open for registrations. A very huge number of you have already registered, but if you have not yet, make sure to register to reserve your spot. This is a completely free webcast with Jen Chesnick of Parker on the Porch. She makes the cutest embroidery designs and in the hoop projects. And I'm really excited that she is going to join us for this free webcast so you can meet her, see how this project comes together. And of course we have a kit for the very cute Boba Tea zipper pouch. But with your kit, you will get all the design files needed to create the In The Hoop zipper pouch, as well as the In The Hoop stuffy. Now the kit will create the zipper pouch, but you'll get bonus design files so you can make a little boba tea squishy um, and gift that away to somebody special in your life who happens to love boba tea because who doesn't right now? It is like the craze of the century. Um, also, just for registering, you will receive some freebies from Parker on the Porch. How nice of them. I'm going to give them a round of applause. Yay! Love it. You will get these cute little mochi charms as well as a card guard. This card guard holds like a gift card to your favorite boba tea uh, place. Or you could put your ID, a little bit of cash in there what have you. And these make great gifts as well and cute little accessories for your In The Hoop Boba Tea zipper pouch. And can you see that cute little Boba Tea charm? If you purchase a kit, you will get that little zipper pull charm and it's so adorable. It just totally makes it in my opinion. Um, so very cute bonus designs, very cute little additions to your kit purchase. The kit is already on sale. You can grab it up for only $49.99, I want to say. Is that right? It can't be right. Is that right? It's only $49.99. Uh, the designs themselves for the zipper pouch and the stuffy are valued at $19.99. So for like $20 more, you're getting the entire kit. So grab it up. We will only have these kits while supplies last. Once they're gone, they're gone. And you want to make sure to grab yours up while it is on sale. All right. And remember, if you can't join us live, the webcast is happening June 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. It still feels weird to even say the word June right now, but it is upon us. And uh, if you cannot in, uh, join us live, you can still watch it in its entirety on demand after the live event ends. So be sure and register, get your freebies, do all of those things. Add it to your calendar. If you can't join live or can't join for the entire thing, you can always go back to your personal library at sewingonline.sulky.com and you can watch everything that you missed or may have missed. You can also review it at any time and rewatch it, pause, fast forward, all those things once your kit arrives. So it's a really, really great resource and you'll be learning from the Parker on the Porch designer herself and can ask questions, all kinds of things. So it'll be really fun, really great project. Um, and if you haven't tried a boba tea yet, get you to a boba tea shop because they're so fun to drink. Um, and especially if you have little ones, grandkids, nieces, nephews, kids love the boba tea. All right. 
So let's get to the convertible picnic blanket. And I have a bonus project to share with you today as well. I'm going to be uh, showing you how to create some freestanding butterfly little napkin rings. Um, and they are a great addition to your convertible picnic blanket because they have a little elastic hair tie or nylon really hair tie sewn to them so you can package up a napkin a set of silverware roll it up and wrap your little butterfly napkin ring around it stick those in your convertible picnic tote and then when you get to your location you can have your plates your little napkins everybody gets a little place setting and roll out your super large convertible picnic blanket. Everyone will be so impressed with you. All right, so we'll get to that as well. If you have questions as I'm working my way through the tutorial today, put them in the live chat and in the comments, and I will stop and periodically address those questions. If you are engaging with the post today, meaning you are commenting, giving me some great emojis, you are sharing the post today, you will be automatically eligible to win our butterfly palette. The butterfly palette comes with the freestanding butterfly embroidery designs that I'm going to be talking about a little bit later, as well as 10 spools of sulky rayon thread that you need to create these beautiful butterflies. All right. Everybody is ready. Um, could you use the butterfly napkin ring as a ponytail holder? Absolutely, because it is sewn onto, where did they go? My favorite hair ties in the universe, okay? I mean, I know that this is a sulky webcast, but I gotta share this with you. So I buy them in bulk on the Amazon because my girls go through hair ties like you wouldn't believe. I mean, where do they all go, right? And I think these are the perfect little ties for things like napkin rings. And I'm also going to use them in the convertible picnic tote. So you can get them all one color. They come in black. Or you can get them in like neutrals, which are like, you know, colors of your hair, basically. Different shades of brown, blonde, black, things like this. Or you can get them multicolored, which is really fun. This is a pack of a hundred. We'll see how long it lasts in my house. But what's great about them is it's almost like they're cut from like nylon tights or something. All right. Because they have, they're, they're not really tubular, right? See how it's just like this, but they roll over themselves, okay? They have no connector. They do not pull at your hair when you're taking them out. They are like the best things. If you have long hair or if you have littles with long hair, um, they're the best hair ties. They are also the best for the projects I'm gonna talk about today because you can easily just hand sew them to the back of your freestanding butterfly and all of a sudden you have this napkin ring that you can put around your napkin, just one time will do it. And like I said, it'll hold your silverware and your napkin all together as one, or you can make a decorative place setting with them. And then they do double duty as a hair tie as well. Um, and probably a host of other things too. So we will get to that momentarily, but I had to share with you. And they're called Hoyles. I don't know how to say it. The link for them is in the blog post, as is the link for everything I'm going to talk about today. So if you're interested in any of the products that I'm featuring, or if you want the full tutorial for the picnic blanket or the butterfly napkin rings, be sure to click on the little see more button in the description of this post today. And the whole description will pop out. And it's a long one today because I'm talking about so many things. You'll find a link for the Boba Tea webcast, a link for the Boba Tea kit, all the featured products, the two tutorials I'm going to talk about, and our Craft Tours London trip. Everything is listed in the uh, description of today's post. All right, so let's begin with our convertible picnic blanket. 
This is what it looks like when it is folded up into itself. So you basically sew a pocket onto the picnic blanket and you can store stuff inside the pocket when the blanket is flat as well. Um, you can even take a mini pillow or a travel pillow with you, stick it in that pocket and rest your head on it when you're at the picnic or at the beach, right? I know. This is such a great blanket. All right, so we're adding a decorative strap, and I just used a piece of webbing. And wouldn't you know it, I used this webbing for a tote bag, and I had this random length left over. I think it's maybe 20, 22 inches, which is not enough for a full-on tote bag um, or something like that but it was perfect for this project. So little odds and ends work really well for this. Um, Allison is saying great to take to an outdoor concert. Absolutely, because again, you can stash some stuff inside, then when you get to where you're going, utilize all of your things, your sunscreen, your sunglasses, etc. And then, as I mentioned, you can also store your stuff in that pocket after you take the blanket out of the pocket. All right, so that's what it looks like when it's all folded up. And I do have a series of images to show you how it folds into itself as well. Uh, so we'll get to that after we uh, construct our great little convertible picnic blanket. So first, this is the webbing that I used. It's one and a half inches wide. And there's a lot of different pre-packaged webbings you can find. Um, some are just plain, um, you know, neutral colors. But if you can find a happy little, um, you know, print of webbing, webbing is relatively inexpensive, um, usually sold by the yard. Sometimes you can get it in one or two yard packs. But I like to uh, finish the edges of the webbing just by melting them a little bit. And don't be scared. It's not going to go up in flames. You just want to sort of singe the edges of your webbing strap so that it doesn't fray over time and fray into the seam allowance um, and start pulling away from your bag. If you purchase pre-made bags that have webbing straps, you'll notice that over time that webbing kind of deteriorates along the seam. And I really think it's due to the ends not being really finished. So it's going to unravel over time. It's the nature of the beast. So just to kind of help curb that, we're going to singe the edges or the ends rather, the cut ends of our webbing. And you might notice when you take your webbing, especially if you got a pre-packaged uh, 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 length of webbing, one end will be finished. It's almost like they dip it in a coating or something like that. So you could use that end and then just singe the other end. Or if you have a random piece like I did, make sure to singe both of those ends and just be really careful and understand the uh, fabric content of your webbing as well um, to make sure it doesn't just go up into flames, right? So usually they have like a coating on them. All right, so after we singe the edges of that, we're gonna kind of set that aside and let me make this a little bit smaller. And we're going to work on our quilt sandwich, uh, which is our top vinyl tablecloth, our bottom vinyl tablecloth. And then I put a layer of batting in between to give it a little bit of loft, a little bit of comfort. I have seen people use a vinyl tablecloth with the flannel backing and then fabric or a sheet or an old duvet cover, something like that, over the top with nothing between. And it's a really thin, lightweight sort of picnic blanket that really just serves a purpose of protecting you from the wet grass, the mud, the dirt, the sand, etc. But I like the addition of a little bit of loft. Um, plus, I'm quilting mine a little bit so that the layers stay together. So I find that the addition of the batting um, is really necessary for me, but I am using a very low loft batting, so it's not super bulky, so that when we do fold it together, 
we don't end up with this giant, you know, pillow. We still have, you know, a nice little tote. Um, you know, I will say it does have bulk to it, but it's not, you know, super lofty. So we're going to use our trusty Sulky KK2000 temporary spray adhesive, and we're going to spray the heck out of the back of the uh, two tablecloths and sandwich our batting in between. Now, if you use the uh, oblong or rectangular tablecloths that I found, which are 52 by 90, you really need a big flat work surface to spray baste your layers together. Um, and you do not want to use pins here. Every time we put a pin into this vinyl coating, it's going to create a hole that we cannot recover from. It also might snag if you're really quickly taking your pins out and things like that. So we're going to rely on our KK2000 and a little bit later, we're going to be using only Wonder Clips to clip our layers around the edge for our batting um, and, you know, add things like our pocket and things like that. So no pins and just know that your needle holes are going to be permanent as well. So you need to be very mindful of your stitching. Think about it before you just go at it at the machine every time. Uh, so that you have minimal mistakes to potentially rip out. So after we spray baste our layers together, we're going to shape the corners a little bit. I find it just makes it easier to add our binding uh, to the corners if they are rounded a little bit. We can just head right around those corners. We don't have to miter them, adding a bunch of bulk. Um, and potentially uh, more needle holes uh, than we need along those corners because we're going to be adding some hair ties to the corners, which is going to allow us to stake down our picnic blanket. And, you know, if you live in a state like Colorado, like I do, all of the sudden you're having your picnic and here comes a gust of wind and everything goes everywhere. So these little hair ties are going to help us stake down the blanket, making it nice and flat. Um, and just another added little touch that makes this above and beyond um, a one of these blankets that you could just buy at the store. All right, so we're going to shape our corners. And my uh, tablecloth came with this surged edge. Um, so that surged edge that you're seeing was from the factory. Uh, if you are cutting yardage because you fell in love with a print that they have over in the you know wide yardage section or the home deck section of the fabric store, then you can finish the edges by zigzagging or surging those. Um, it just makes it easier as you're working your way through the project, keeping all those layers together especially if there's a coating or backing on it. But just so you know, I didn't surge that. That was just the factory edge from the tablecloth. So you can see all I need to do is trim my batting just a little bit along each corner to just follow that curve uh, that is the factory curve for the tablecloth. If your tablecloth is straight, simply take a plate or another round object and follow the curve and then trim uh, off all of those layers. Now we're going to quilt our picnic blanket, keeping all of those layers together nice and flat. Now my blanket had this grid pattern on it. I will say it's very difficult to match up your grid pattern on the top with the grid pattern on the other side of your tablecloth simply because since these are factory made, all of the grids are going to be slightly different from each other. Um, if you found two that were exactly the same, I would be shocked, but it could happen. But anyways, you can follow that grid, placing your uh, stitching in the center of all of the lines or every other line. You really don't need to heavily quilt this. It's just going to create more holes or, you know, needle holes in your project. 
So what I did was I lengthened my stitch length and I used an 8012 Microtex needle, which has a very sharp, slim point to it. Uh, so it's going to reduce, you know, the likelihood that my needle could snag the fabric, things like that. So an 8012 Microtex, I used 40 weight poly deco thread that matched the uh, yellow in the tablecloth. And I just went right inside of the lengthwise uh, stripes on the tablecloth. And I skipped every other one. And I just have straight lines going down the tablecloth, quilting the layers together. If you also want to uh, quilt along some of the width-wise lines, you can do that as well. The amount of quilting is totally up to you. But I thought let's keep it quick and easy and simple and go with the print that's already on the tablecloth. For something like the star uh, tablecloth that I have here that was in the patriotic section, you could even do a large star in the center of your uh, blanket and just stitch along it. You know, chalk it out with some chalk, follow those lines, and quilt a big star in the center of your picnic blanket. So it's entirely up to you, but I would keep it simple. Again, this is going to, you know, have a lot of wear and tear to it. Um, it's meant to go on the grass and in the dirt, right? So we don't need to go crazy and do some giant free motion design, something like that. Just keep it simple. The less stitching, the better. We just really want to keep all of those layers together so they don't shift and your batting doesn't shift over time. After you have that quilting done, you can set aside the main blanket and we're going to deal with our pocket. So we have an outer pocket piece and an inner pocket piece, and I added a layer of batting between those as well. That way, when we are using it and we're stuffing all of the blanket into the pocket, the outer portion of that pocket that we're stuffing into has some substance to it as well. So it's a little bit stronger, and we can then quilt our pocket piece. You can also add an embroidery design to this portion and create your pocket out of a heavier weight canvas or denim fabric, something that is a little more, um, I don't know, substantial than our vinyl tablecloth um, so that it just holds up better when you're folding it a gazillion times, taking your blanket out, things like that. And then when you're carrying the tote, you can have a cool design on it. You can choose a licensed sports design. Uh, you can personalize it with a monogram or a last name. You can add a fun summer design from our Hello Summer Machine Embroidery Collection. All kinds of ideas. Or you can quilt it like I am going to do um, here. So we're adding our batting to uh, one of the pocket pieces using the KK2000 again to base those layers. Then we're gonna add our outer pocket piece. And it's kind of hard to see here because I have a yellow chalk marker and I've got a yellow canvas fabric that I'm using. But I just chalked some diagonal lines um, across my pocket in sort of a crosshatch pattern. Um, so it's mimicking the design on my main blanket motif, right, with the my squares and triangles. Oh my god, there's a moth in here. Did you guys see that? Ah! Oh my god. Out with you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I cannot stand moths. They remind me of Silence of the Lambs, and I have to get this thing out of here. Okay, I'm going to find my zen. I'm really sorry if y'all um, see this moth <laughs> throughout the tutorial. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm keeping an eye on it. Oh, lordy. Whew. Where was I? <laughs> We're quilting our placemat. Whew. Okay, it's on the window. I, I have an eye on it. <laughs> 
<sighs> Thanks, everybody, for bearing with me on that. Mm, okay, we're plotting our quilting lines, and then we're going to sew along them. Now we're going to get uh, that strap that we prepared, and we're clipping it to the upper edge of the pocket. And you can see, come in a little ways so that you account for the seam allowance of your pocket so that you don't sew your strap into the seam allowance. All right, someone is saying maybe that is your butterfly. <laughs> Woo, okay. Okay, let's get everything settled. Whew. Okay, so <laughs> we have our strap clipped in place and our quilted pocket front, right? Now we are going to sew our other pocket piece. It's taunting me, you guys. Okay, we're gonna sew our other pocket piece, much like you're sewing a pillow together, tucking your strap in between the layers. You're gonna sew your sides and upper edge. Then we're gonna clip those upper edge corners, making sure to not clip into our strap. And you're gonna turn your pocket right side out. Give it a little bit of a press. Make sure to take your strap and give it a little tug so that it's away from your upper edge. And now we have our nice flat pocket with our strap over the top. You can still see it flying above my head. Okay, I'm going to get over it, I promise. Okay. So the lower raw edge of our pocket piece is still raw. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be covered up with our binding in the very end uh, when we finish our cute little picnic blanket. So now we're gonna place our pocket onto our quilted picnic blanket. So you sort of center it along one of the long raw edges, and we're just gonna pin the uh, lower edge in place, and we're gonna baste it in place. Um, we're also gonna sew the side edges so that the upper part of our pocket, of course, is open and ready to be stuffed with various things, including the blanket itself. All right. So here we are sewing our pocket in place. First I sewed that lower edge, then I smoothed the rest of the pocket, and then I sewed the side edges. Now I also want to mention when you're putting your pocket onto the blanket, the wrong side of the pocket is facing up. The pretty side of the pocket is going to be flipped to the right side when you stuff it. So if you do add an embroidery design or some kind of personalization, you want that to be right side down facing your picnic blanket so that when you're carrying your tote, your pretty design is showing on the front. Does that make sense? All right. Jennifer says, I'm surprised you didn't embroider the pocket, Ellen. I know, right? Sometimes I have to do tutorials without machine embroidery, even if it kills me. <laughs> but we know there's so many different ways of personalizing these things. Um, so this one's for the inner quilter in you. And you can make it um, quilty or you can make it with embroidery. Your choice. All right, so now we're going to come up the sides. Oh, and notice that I have a nonstick or Teflon sewing machine foot installed right here. And it's really not for the canvas pocket, but it is helpful when you're sewing that sticky vinyl tablecloth and when you're doing that quilting. If you are finding, if you don't have an even feed foot like I do, I have an even feed mechanism that I just bring on down and clips to the back of my sewing machine foot. Um, I use that for most of the quilting on this vinyl tablecloth part when I did the quilting. But if you don't have that or um, your walking foot could cause some, um, it could mar the fabric depending on the type of walking foot you have. Um, if it has those rollers on it, I would 
steer clear of that for this because, um, you know, even just passing over the tablecloth, if you have like, you know, sharp scissors or clips in your hand or something, you could accidentally nick it and it does create these holes or snags. So you do need to be kind of careful when you are using, um, you know, the, the vinyl tablecloth. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So you're going to sew up the sides of your pocket and that's going to be attached to your picnic blanket. Now we're going to add those hair ties to each of our rounded corners. You can see I now have like black thread, right? Um, that is so you can see my serger stitches. And let's be honest, my serger was already threaded with 40 weight poly deco thread in black. So I was lazy and that is what I used to serge finish the entire perimeter of my uh, quilted picnic blanket just to keep all of those layers together along the perimeter because you know my quilting is keeping it together but my quilting is rather far apart so to keep all my layers together and nice and flat and compressed so that I can bind this really easily I just quick serge finished the entire perimeter if you don't have a serger you can totally just zigzag finish the perimeter and that'll work just fine too. We just want um, the entire perimeter nice and flat and compressed, okay, and together. So that's why you're seeing those black serger stitches right there uh, because I took a shortcut and didn't rethread my serger. So we're gonna take one of our really great nylon hair ties. Um, you could also use a piece of fold over elastic. If you've got some odds and ends, bits and bobbles of fold over elastic, that would work perfect here. Just make some loops and clip one to each of the four corners. And I just smushed it together, clipped it on there with a wonder clip. And now you can see what the binding looks like with our little hair tie along each one of the rounded corners. So I stitch my binding and you know what? I just used pre-made bias binding packaged from the store, which I normally do not use. But again, this is an outdoor project that's going to get lots of use and wear and tear. And I don't need to use my best binding for this. And the purchase stuff matched perfectly. So I went with it. So you're going to add your binding strips or strip rather and make sure that it, you know, that you sew your little hair tie at each corner with your uh, binding stitching. Then we're gonna wrap the binding around to the back side of the blanket. And I still hand sewed my binding in place. Um, if you wanna machine sew yours, that is entirely up to you as well. You do need to be careful. Again, you're using this vinyl tablecloth material. So just be careful when you're doing your hand stitches. Um, my needle here in this picture is massively big. Um, I switched to a smaller one, but these larger needles make it easier for you to see on camera here what I'm doing. But it did make a rather large hole when I started off my binding. So just be cognizant of that as well. And then you have your finished blanket. So you can add your hair ties to the wrong side or the right side. It doesn't really matter. When you put your blanket down, you just pull on the hair tie, stick a tent stake in there, and then your blanket is nice and taut and won't go anywhere um, on those windy days. And it's just a really easy addition to the uh, picnic blanket that doesn't require, you know, much more cost or work at all because we're just adding it when we sew the binding on. Um, Jennifer's saying, can we just machine finish the binding? Absolutely. Absolutely you can. <clears throat> all right, so now we've got our finished blanket, it's a little wrinkly when you get it out of the uh, uh, little pocket pouch, 
uh, but it really does the trick here. So you can see just how big it is. It's a very good size picnic blanket. I mean, three or four, even six kids could fit on this thing. It's pretty good sized, that is. So now we're going to fold it up so you can see how it folds into itself. So you can tote it around um, and easily uh, carry a few things with you. So you want to make sure it's nice and flat on your surface. Oh my gosh, look at this tiny little picture that came up. Let's make it bigger. Here we go. So <laughs> it's nice and flat. Um, and we're going to start folding one of the short ends. We're going to double fold it towards the center. So toward your pocket. All right. So here we have one of the sides folded toward the pocket. The uh, pocket is on the wrong side or underneath facing the grass at this point. So we're going to fold that short edge and we're going to fold the other short edge to overlap the first one that we folded. Now we have this little rectangle with our pocket along the right edge here of our fold. Now we're going to turn our pocket right side out so it kind of envelops that edge. So now we would have pretty side of the pocket facing out if you have your cute embroidery design or your pretty quilting on that side. And then you're simply going to double fold that edge, tucking it inside of the pocket. Is everybody with me? All right. Oops, that's our napkin ring. All right. So tucking it inside the pocket and let me go back to our original photo so you can see how it's all nice and tidy. And you just put your hand into that little pocket, smooth out the corners, you know, push the blanket into the corners, and then you can fill it with various things like the napkin rings I am about to show you. Everyone is saying this is like a quillow, totally like a quillow, which is like a quilt pillow tote deal, but we're using these vinyl tablecloths to protect ourselves and our things from moisture, dirt, things of that nature. All right, so that's our finished convertible picnic blanket with hair ties, webbing strap, quilting, um, and, you know, moths flying around. And now I'm going to show you our bonus project, which is our butterfly napkin rings. We're going to use those same hair ties to tie or excuse me to hand sew or tack to the back of a freestanding butterfly. So you can use it as a napkin ring. You can roll your napkin around your cutlery that you're taking to your picnic, throw it in your convertible picnic blanket. It'll keep everybody's uh, place setting nice and tidy. And you can also make a really pretty place setting with them. And uh, they're so easy to make. So as somebody mentioned, it can also do double duty as a hair tie. So if you uh, don't need to use it as a napkin ring, you can use these and make really cute little butterfly hair ties as well. So this design um, is available at sulky.com as a machine embroidery collection. You'll get two sizes of freestanding butterflies, and they come in two parts. You get the wings for the butterfly, and then you get the body for the butterfly. You embroider them onto Sulky Ultra Solvy Stabilizer, and then you wash away all that stabilizer, you layer the body over the wings, and then you sew them together just along the center body part. And it makes it so that the wings are kind of, um, moldable, movable, and so is the body portion as well. So you have a little antenna. It's They're very, very cute. I added a cork fabric backing to my butterfly to make it a little bit more substantial for my napkin rings. So you, this is an optional step, and I'll show you how I added it in the stitch out process. But that is not how it is intended when you purchase up the embroidery design. It's simply freestanding 
with uh, thread and a little bit of fabric inside of the wings. Um, so it doesn't have a backing to it um, as it was originally digitized, just so you know. Um, it's also available at sulky.com as a palette. A palette means you get the designs along with all of the thread spools that you need to create the design. So it's a great value to purchase it up as a palette because you're essentially, it's like getting the designs for free um, and, you know, getting all of this great thread where you can make tons of butterflies. Um, you do probably want to grab up a spool of sulky black bobbin thread unless you're not adding a backing. If you're not adding a backing, I would use the same thread in the bobbin that you're using on the top. Um, and it does use a lot of black thread for the outline of the butterfly, but it comes with two spools. So you should have enough to create lots of butterflies in different sizes. Um, but if you are putting a backing like I did with the cork, you can use sulky black bobbin thread. So you don't have to use up all of your pretty uh, rayon threads when they're going to be hidden, you know, by that cork fabric when you're all done. All right. So. And yes, people are asking so many things to do with these butterflies. Absolutely. We actually did a free webinar um, on these freestanding butterflies, and you can still register for that and watch it in its entirety um, at sewingonline.sulky.com. And there's so much inspiration for different projects you can make with these butterflies. But I just had this other idea for this napkin ring and a little bit of modification to the design to share with you today. But you can go back and register for that uh, webcast if you want. Grab up the palette and grab up some Ultra Solvy and you'll be on your way to making tons and tons of butterflies. Um, you could even like hot glue the butterfly to like a hair clip and just have it as a little cute little hair clip um, for a little girl would be so cute. So there's two sizes of butterfly designs. Um, and I went with the smallest size, and then I actually sized it down a little bit more from there. My pictures are coming in so large. So you can see there's two parts of the design, the wings and the body. If you decide to size up or down from one of the butterfly sizes, you'll get two sizes to choose from, you also need to size down the body the same amount. So let's say you go down 20% as, as low as you can go for the smallest butterfly design. You want to do the same for the body. So you don't end up with this humongo butterfly body and these little wings. Catch my drift? All right. So now we are going to only hoop our Ultra Solvy stabilizer. Ultra Solvy is four times as thick as Sulky Original Solvy. And it's so great for things like thread work, thread lace, freestanding lace. Um, and even though these butterflies have a little bit of fabric to them, I'm still going to call them basically freestanding lace butterflies. Um, but they're really more like freestanding appliques uh, since technically they have a little bit of fabric to them. But at any rate, we want to hoop only our Ultra Solvy stabilizer. I am using a magnetic hoop here. You certainly do not have to use a magnetic hoop. Um, I just pretty much use them exclusively now. I am um, a magnetic hooper for life. Um, if you're interested in magnetic hoops, we do have them at sulky.com. All you need to do is put in your machine brand, make and model and it will tell you the sizes of hoops compatible with your machine. And they communicate with your machine just like your standard hoops do. Once you click them into place, your machine will know the size of hoop that you have on your machine. So it's pretty great. All right, so again, magnetic hoop or standard hoop, just hoop up your ultra solidy stabilizer and begin the design. Um, First, mine is stitching out my butterfly body, and then it's going to go to my wings. Now, for the butterfly body, it is all thread. It is completely 100% black rayon thread. I found it 
stitched out much easier when I uh, went down in speed. All right, so slow your machine down at least by halfway, um, and you might have uh, better results uh, with your butterfly body. I just found, I don't know, it just it just stitched out better. Um, and what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, I'm also using a Microtex needle for this design as well. And the reason is because I'm adding that cork fabric backing to my butterfly, and I'll show you that a little bit later, um, the cork fabric performs really great with a Microtex needle or a top stitch needle, but this is just one layer of cork, so I love using the Microtex needle for it. I used an 80-20 that went uh, with my 40-weight rayon thread and slowed the machine speed considerably. When you get to your butterfly wings, you will have an applique fabric for the background of your wings. This is where you get to decide what color your butterfly is going to be. Because it's mostly black, there's some yellows and purples that go into the thread. But I find if you've got batik scraps, that fabric looks awesome in the butterfly. Um, or if you have like some tie-dye print fabric, something that's multicolored would look really cool. I just happen to have this scrap of orange batik and it just works so well to make it look kind of like a monarch butterfly. So you're gonna do your steps of the applique process where first it'll sew your placement stitch of the butterfly wings. Then you're gonna place your fabric. You can use a little bit of KK2000 on the back of your fabric, stick it to your Ultra Solvy stabilizer. Then it's gonna sew your tacking stitches to secure your fabric in place. Then you're gonna use your trusty duckbill or double curve applique scissors to trim around those tacking stitches really close to the stitches. Then it's gonna stitch out your butterfly details. All right? So after the butterfly details are all sewn, we're gonna remove our hoop from the machine and flip it over. All right? You make this a little smaller, move it over. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna place a piece of cork fabric right side up over the back of our butterfly. So we're kind of doing another applique step to secure the fabric on the back side of the hoop. If you don't have cork fabric, you can use another piece of your batik fabric. Um, I just find that the cork is more substantial, it's more finished, right? It's not as flimsy as that batik fabric could be. Um, and I really just wanted it so that it, it stood up nicer, I guess, um, or better against my napkin ring. So this is totally optional for you. You could simply finish the butterfly in the hoop, rinse away your stabilizer, and go on to the next step. So if you want to add the cork, we're putting it on the wrong side of the hoop with the cork right side facing up. Then we're gonna tape it in place using our brand new Sulky Clear Embroidery Tape. Has everyone purchased this yet? Because it is amazing. This is our reusable clear embroidery tape and it tears so cleanly along any kind of stitching edge if you accidentally sew over it. It secures your fabric to the stabilizer so nice and strong unlike paper tape, painter's tape, masking tape, which sometimes will like to curl or start moving when your machine is moving during the embroidery process. So this stuff is really amazing. It comes in packs of two. Um, and as I mentioned, it tears so cleanly along the edge or along the stitching line. You can make thinner pieces of it really easily. I mean, it it's... It's just so nice. And as I mentioned, it's reusable. So you can use this tape a couple of times 
for some different butterfly stitch outs. Um, I just stick it to the sides of my machine. And then when I go to another stitch out or another portion of, let's say, my in the hoop boba tea zipper pouch, I can grab up a piece of tape I already used, get more uses out of it. So anyways, once we have our cork secured to the back of the hoop, then we are going to go back to the machine and we're going to go back to that first placement stitch um, of the butterfly. That's going to tack our cork in place. So see how mine says two um, colon one? That means I'm working with my wings design, which was the second design I added to the hoop. And then we're going to stitch the first color stop of that portion of the design. So just make sure that you're on the wings and you're not going all the way back to your butterfly body um, to, you know, stitch these stitches at this point. So we're going to sew that row of stitches. See my cork is along the back side. And then, oops. After this, we're going to take our machine, or excuse me, we're going to take our hoop off the machine again, and we're going to trim around the cork edge. All right. Then, I need to make this a little bit smaller. I don't know what's happening with my pictures today. Then after we do that, we need to go back to our finishing step of the design. So all the way to the end, and those are going to be our satin finishing stitches that finishes the edge of our butterfly and the edges of our cork fabric. All right. So I'm a little out of order here, but these are the placement stitches that we went back to. The uh, number one stitch of the wings portion of the design and you can see those stitches on the back side of the cork. So you're going to remove your hoop from the machine, trim around those stitches with your applique shears. There's what it looks like when you trim it away. And now we need to do those finishing stitches. And I wanted to show you this because you see the middle of those wings, how there's a little bit of void between the two stitches. You don't want to trim all the way up into there. You need that piece of cork there um, because it's going to help shape your butterfly when you put the body onto the wings. All right. So now we've got, sorry, I was a little out of order there with that one photo, but hopefully you followed along. After the final satin stitches where we go back to the machine and we go, all the way down to the very last stitch. Then we're gonna remove our pieces from the hoop, from the stabilizer in the hoop. Now with the butterfly body, I was actually able to just lift up the little bottom of the butterfly and lift it gently away from the Ultra Solvi because there were so many stitches and then there's a final satin stitch that's pretty narrow along the entire perimeter of the butterfly body, I was able to just lift it up and out of the Ultra Solvi, and then I gave it a little bit of a rinse to just get the Ultra Solvi away from the edges of the antenna. But I left a good majority of Ultra Solvi within the stitches, so I didn't rinse it away entirely, and that's going to give it a little bit of stiffness where I can mold my little antenna a little bit, and then when it dries, that Ultra Solvi helps keep its shape. All right, you could do the same thing with your wings if you do not have that cork backing. But again, I wanted my wings to be relatively flat for my napkin ring. And then the body is what I could manipulate um, and make, you know, give it a little bit of 3D um, uh, dimension. So I have trimmed the stabilizer beyond my little cork backed uh, butterfly. And what you can do is just take like a wet Q-tip really and really saturate it and run it along the outer edge of your butterfly. 
and that's going to help the ultra solvy dissolve and I like to do that from the right side so that any stabilizer kind of curls toward the back and it makes the front of the butterfly look really nice and pretty and you know like I said it, it sort of curls to the back so it gives it really nice shape. Um, Jennifer says, I just wet my fingertips. Perfect. Perfect. That works as well. All right. So now we have our stabilizer has been removed and we have our two pieces. So we're going to layer our body piece over the top of our butterfly wings. And you just center the middle portion of the butterfly body over the top of those wings and you're going to go to regular sewing mode and just sew a little circle to attach the body to the wings. So the little butterfly bottom and butterfly head, those stay freestanding and you can manipulate those. And the body is just where you are tacking it in place. You can also just sew that by hand and you can sew it in place at the same time that you add your little elastic to the back if you so desire. Or you can sew those at separate times, machine sew your body, and then just hand tack, whip stitch your uh, elastic to the back side of your uh, napkin ring. So here I am just kind of rinsing away the stabilizer from those antenna, like I mentioned. Um, again, a little bit out of order, I apologize everyone. So here I am with one of those great hair ties I was telling you about at the beginning of today's program. And you want to make sure to orient your hair tie um, in the right way for your napkin ring. So if you have your hair tie, instead of running horizontally along your butterfly wings, if you have it running vertically, it's going to be sideways once you put it around your napkins. So just be, you know, aware of that and, th and think about that a little bit when you are placing your hair tie. And then you're simply going to just whip stitch it by hand, go through just that layer of cork and sew through uh, your little nylon hair tie. And you can see I just kind of smushed it together a little bit, hand sewed it in place just with a few, uh, you know, whip stitches. Then you have your body as well. And like I said, you can hand sew that or whip stitch it. And then you have your cute little napkin ring. It fits around this napkin two times. Um, you can certainly buy a little bit smaller hair ties. Um, this one is, it says it's four centimeters. I think they also make them a little bit smaller for like baby hair or finer hair. Um, so if you don't want to go around your napkin twice, you can go with a smaller size little nylon hair tie. But if you also want to wrap up your cutlery for your picnic and even put a paper napkin around it and wrap it with a cute little butterfly hair tie um, or butterfly napkin ring rather, then everybody gets to go home with like a little party favor after the picnic as well. So that's kind of a cute thing if you have, you know, a birthday um, at the beach or, you know, a butterfly picnic theme, something like that. That's a cute little idea. And then gift everybody their own little butterfly hair tie, bracelet, napkin ring. It has so many uses to it. So I'm going to quickly go through the comments here and questions. And if you have any questions, be sure to add them to the chat because one lucky viewer who is watching, commenting, sharing, all those good things will automatically, all of you doing that, will be eligible to win our butterfly machine embroidery palette. So you'll be able to play with all kinds of butterflies and all kinds of sulky rayon threads and create lots of these um, that, you know, flutter around in your sewing room without freaking you out because they're made of thread. Huh. Oh my gosh. See how I did that? Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's, um, Kathy says cork looks good on the back. Great, thank you. You could also use any kind of no fray fabric. You could even use sulky felty for the back of your napkin ring. Just something to kind of conceal the back of those threads um, and give you a little bit something more substantial to sew 
your uh, hair tie in place so that it doesn't just, you know, get attached to the thread and then, you know, whatever, whatever happens. <laughs> All right. Lots of people saying I have that embroidery tape in my cart. I am telling you what. Yeah, if you're looking for the link to that tape, I did put it in the featured products in the description of today's post. If you're not seeing all of the links, it's a really long description today, everybody. Click on that see more button. The whole description will pop out. You'll be able to click and save the links for future reference um, and figure out um, and take a look at that embroidery tape because you're going to absolutely love it. All right. Island Batik charms, adding little charms and things. Such a great idea. Really cute. Um, could you use a piece of marine vinyl? So instead of the cork fabric, some marine vinyl along the back. Absolutely. Um, it's a really great use for those little scraps um, because the butterfly, when I when I went down 20% in size on that smallest butterfly, you know, I, I mean, it's only about this big for your napkin ring. So absolutely great idea for scraps of things like vinyl, faux leather, cork fabrics. Um, I never throw those things away. I always, you know, those fabrics are so expensive. You can make little tassels, little jewelry charms, um, little napkin rings, things like that. All right. Where do you find cork fabric? Um, there are a lot of resources for cork fabric. I happen to love the cork fabric from Sally Tomato, sallytomato.com. They have really great quality cork fabrics in a lot of different colors and um, finishes, styles, also faux leathers. Um, so that's where I mostly get all of my cork fabric. All right. Lots of people saying they have lots of freestanding butterfly designs. Um, so that's perfect. And freestanding lace earrings. So cool looking. The Ultra Solvy Stabilizer is really your best friend for these freestanding things, especially when you are only using thread and there's no fabric involved, like for the butterfly body. You need a lot of stabilizer so that there is something for that thread to grab onto during the stitch out. Otherwise, you can get loops, you can get really nasty looking bobbin thread underneath. Um, and even for that butterfly um, body, if you are going down in size, your stitches are going to be even closer together unless you're using software to make sure that they're kind of spaced out. So you might even go through two layers of Ultra Solvy Stabilizer to make sure there's something for the threads to grab onto during the stitch out. Then when you wash it away, it looks flat and nice and beautiful. So if you're having problems with that or your bobbin thread has given you some issues, add some more of the Ultra Solvy Stabilizer then it'll be like having eight layers of original Solvi within that butterfly body and you'll be good to go. All right. Um, Twyla says, great tutorial. Now to go get that pesky flying monster. I know. Have you noticed I'm feeling a little itchy now <laughs> from having the moth sighting? And I will say, I don't see it anymore. So now I'm even more freaked out because there's so much fabric in this room. I don't need any moths around. So I'm going to go on a moth hunt and wish me luck. And I thank you all so much for joining me today. Don't forget to go and register for our Boba Tea in the Hoop zipper pouch webcast with Parker on the porch. Reserve your spot. Grab your kit. I'll see you there on June 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Go make something great and uh, show off your butterflies and have a picnic and enjoy the outdoors. I'll see you next Tuesday for another So What?